Chapter 336, Principal Mia. 300, 301, 320, Lu Xu counted the stack of notes as he walked, 389 yuan. Although they were already rich enough to afford land or a house, Lu Xu was still passionate about making money. At first, he expected his journey in the capital would be rather boring, but now he had found some new ways to have fun. Brother Xu, Chen Zuan watched as Lu Xu counted the money for 30 minutes. It was not that the money was too hard to count, but Lu Xu had counted it more than once. Yes? Lu Xu turned to look at Chen Zuan. Aren't you hungry? Chen Zuan hinted. It was almost 8 p.m. and time for dinner. Nope, Lu Xu replied, I ate quite a lot of melon seeds this afternoon, and the fruit plate too. Oh, the honeydew was super sweet. From Chan Zuan's distress, plus 199. All this ordinary food now seemed so delicious. But could you please stop talking? Are you hungry? Lu Xu grinned. Chen Zuan was almost hissing with displeasure, you asking me whether I'm hungry? Don't you have any bloody idea about that? Very good. I can feel your strong urge to survive. Let's go for dinner, Lu Xu smiled. Just right there, was a street side stall, Chuanzhou cool pot brochette and Lu Xu walked in with Chen Zuan. Anyway, living a life was equally important as earning money. At the stall, customers could choose as many sticks of brochette as they wanted and pay accordingly. For this, Lu Xu knew a petty trick where he could hide the sticks in his seal of lands. That way, who know how many he ate? But Lu Xu would never do that. It was not easy for him to make money, so it would be the same for other people as well. Chen Zuan was ravenous. Although he had the talent of staving off hunger so long as he was full, who would use it under normal conditions? But truth be told, Lu Xu always found it hilarious that Zuan had awakened to this kind of power. Brother Xu, where are we sleeping today? Any plan for tomorrow? Chen Zuan asked as he was gorging on brochette. Don't worry. I've got a place in mind. You'll have a good sleep, away from winds and rains, I promise, Lu Xu replied as he stuffed food into his mouth. Chen Zuan was confused. His reply didn't quite sound like a hotel. Weren't they going to stay in a hotel? Brother Xu, as a candidate in this assessment, do you have any plans for your future? Honestly speaking, I do admire you from the bottom of my heart, though I'm aware of your ordinary aptitude, Chen Zuan asked. Don't call me Brother Shu. It sounds like Brother Shu. Um, Chen Zuan hesitated. Was there any difference? One cannot deny the power of language. Despite the same pronunciation, the translation of a Chinese name into an English one could really make many jokes. No wonder Chen Zuan didn't get it at first. He took the entire 30 seconds to understand. Oh, okay. I shall call you Lu Xu then. Not any plans in particular. I'll just get along well with Xiaoyu, send her to school and grow some Chinese chives on a magic rich land. Of course, I can't sell the crops at a vegetable market, but maybe I can give it a try at the antique market, Lu Xu spluttered. Chen Zuan was stupefied, so normal? You gonna be a farmer? What Chen Zuan had wanted to ask was Lu Xu's plans in the Heavenly Network. However, it seemed that Lu Xu did not intend on furthering his path in the Heavenly Network at all. Was he unambitious or was it simply his character? Was Lu Xu really considered an expert? Nowadays, the number of Class C experts in the country was on the rise and reached about 100. As one of the 100 out of billions, Lu Xu was indeed an ace. The two had a long chat. It was August, the hottest time of the year. Casually, Chen Zuan asked the stall owner, who was cleaning the tables dirted by customers, Hey, your cool pot brochette is very authentic. Are you from Chuanzhou? Being praised, the owner laughed at once, Tank ya tank ya. Chen Zuan was speechless. Lu Xu as well. The air of the countryside was almost being emitted from his mouth. The dinner cost more than $100, less that Lu Xu's expectation. 
products at these kinds of stalls were usually cheap and fine. Then, Lu Xu led Chen Zuan towards the west. Where are we going? You'll know when we reach it. Based on the time now, we can make it there in time. Lu Xu smiled. Within five minutes, Chen Zuan found himself standing in front of a giant mall, a furniture shop. It'll be closed at night. How to sleep? Lu Xu's intent was immediately clear. Can someone who has undergone cultivation still get caught by an ordinary security guard? What kind of cultivation are you trained for? But... Didn't Heavenly King Nya already say we are not allowed to use our power? Are you an idiot? Did I not use my power when I smashed stones with my forehead just now? Without your power, you'll be starved to death on the streets of the capital. Understood? Lu Xu said irritatedly. Though Chen Zuan looked like a smart guy, why did he suddenly become so obedient in the face of Nia Ting, just like those geniuses who grew up in the warm house? Honestly, Lu Xu had underestimated the deterrence of Nia Ting's name in people's mind. Local students in the capital were more afraid of him than respectful, but the converse was true for those from elsewhere. Chen Zuan pleaded, Nia Ting is our principal. Lu Xu chuckled at once. He was suddenly aware of his ignorance of this issue. Due to some special reasons, Li Ixiao was the principal in Luo Cheng. Thus, without a doubt, Nye Ting would be the principal in the capital. Seeing how frightened this little fatty was, Lu Xu could not imagine how much pressure Nye Ting had exerted on them. Don't laugh, Chen Zuan was cautious, Heavenly King Nye is kind of weird. It seems that he has pretty good knowledge of a lot of things without even seeing them. Oh, Lu Xu nodded. They already had prior experience after all. The pair strutted into the furniture shop. There, the IKEA would open until 10 p.m., unlike other furniture shops which usually closed at 5 to 6 p.m. After we enter, follow me to a hiding place. Since we are both unclean, don't sleep on their beds. A random piece of blanket will do. We can sleep on their pillows, but do remember to wash your hair in the toilet before sleeping. Don't cause them trouble, Lu Xu said. Oh, Chen Zuan was expecting to sleep on a bed. But after a second thought, this was still much better than sleeping outside under the sky. Earlier, he thought Lu Xu would make him sleep under a bridge. For unknown reasons, Chen Zuan felt that although Lu Xu was a joker, he had his own principles he stuck to, which was praiseworthy. Suddenly, he remembered Lu Xu's words earlier that day. In a time when people's physical strength had broken free from their imagination, if they had no restraints on themselves, who would know what kind of people they would end up as? Chapter 337, Men in Black Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios it was unexpected that there would be hand wash left in the IKEA toilet. Considering the situation at hand, hand wash could be a makeshift shampoo as well. Honestly speaking, Chen Zuan had never been through this kind of life before, but Lu Xu was calm, cultivation brings hardships. If the apocalypse is doomed to befall upon us in the future, there won't be any hand wash on the battlefield. Getting used to it earlier is good for you. Chen Zuan watched as Lu Xu put the money in his pocket carefully after he was done with his hair wash. Hesitantly, he asked, Lu Xu, it must have been hard for you after you and Xiaoyu left the orphanage, wasn't it? Really? Lu Xu smiled, as long as there's food and shelter, I don't think it's hard. But Chen Zuan was suddenly saddened. Some people were born to face the hardships in the world, and Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu encountered the coldest apathy on this earth, their birth parents abandoning them at the orphanage. A sign that they no longer loved them. Then, Lu Xu said, next time when we go to the remains, remember to bring more friends, especially those with watches. They may easily get a promotion. At that moment, it suddenly came to Chen Zuan's mind that his watch was worth 420,000 yuan. Instantly, he started to feel sympathetic for himself. Now, Chen Zuan could see Lu Xu's second quality. Although life had indeed not been kind to him, he still had the tenacity to live in this world with positivity. 
It was hard for someone like him to arouse compassion, but it inspired admiration. Can I change it into cash? Actually I don't have much pocket money, Chen Zuan asked. Money hurts friendships. Sleep. Lu Xu grinned. He then took a pillow and put some toilet paper on top before leaning his head on it. From Chen Zuan's distress, plus 199. At that time, it was already pitch black in the furniture mall, but Chen Zuan did not feel sleepy at all. His homesickness started to creep in. Finally, the Daoyuan class geniuses did not manage to find a job as well, though they did have something for dinner. In the end, they ran out of choices and went to restaurants one by one in search for vacancies for hourly workers. However, even low-level jobs like that were not easy to find. Those employers were clever people, who could see straight away that the students were almost totally inexperienced and could not add much value to their stores. Moreover, they wanted long-term contracted workers. Who would waste their energy on hiring someone for half a month, only to hire another one for replacement later? Fortunately, however, the lady in the last store was kind-hearted enough to let them take away all unsold buns that night. Now, although exhausted, at least their dinner was settled. Gathered underneath the bridge, the group complained about the hard floor. How does anyone even sleep like that? Without a pillow, they had to rest on their arms. Furthermore, there were cars and trucks rumbling nearby. Not only would they kick up dirt, the noise would keep the geniuses awake all night too. The class A aptitude geniuses were suddenly like angels fallen from heaven. Screw the pub musical performers, screw the white-collar workers, only buns were true and tangible happiness. There were around 120 buns, which were divided into, on average, four per person. Most of them had finished two and decided to save the other two for breakfast. It was not that they could not sustain through hardships, but that they had never been forced to, until this stage. Human beings' adaptability was awesome. One who cannot endure destitution is one who was simply spoiled. However, right at the moment when everybody was tortured by sleepiness and hunger, over 20 people in black suddenly jumped off from the bridge. Instantly, the air froze in the sweltering summer heat. With their faces half covered by black masks, the intruders' eyes were cold as ice. All Daoyuan class students immediately jumped to their feet but before they could react, the leader curled his lips, robbed them. Like wolves, the men in black attacked. In spite of their extraordinary powers, the geniuses were no rivals for their attackers. Some observant ones noticed at once that there were at least five Class C experts in this group. Actually, their key strength was in their teamwork instead of their power. Due to their flawless collaboration, the geniuses could not harm any of them. The students had never encountered such enemies before. Why did so many practitioners suddenly attack them in the capital? What on earth did they want? In the blink of an eye, the plastic bags in many students' hands were taken away, together with the buns inside. And in the next second, everyone's buns were gone. Then, the leader shouted, Retreat. Just as how it was described, light come light go. No one could stop them. The students were both confused and totally frustrated. Now, everybody knew that it was the Heavenly Network's idea. But why did they rob our buns at night? What for? Are they insane? Who the hell suggested that idea? I should have eaten all my buns. Now. Great. We'll have no breakfast tomorrow. Excellent. Suddenly, all of them began to miss their home. Two girls wept with their arms hugging their knees, I want to go home. I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> Who are you playing with? Can you afford your ticket back home? Meanwhile, outside the Ikea, Lu Xu and Chen Zuan's hiding place, a car parked in the distance. Five people in black alighted from the car and all wore black masks. One smiled, is it necessary for all five of us to take down two students? Only 22 people were deployed to deal with 30 students there. Don't underestimate them. The Heavenly King's own instructions will never go wrong. 
Inside there, there is a Class C metahuman of the strength type. Also, flying daggers are not allowed if we are really going to fight. As the only Class C in this team, I can't even be sure whether I can defeat him alone, the leader said. Is he the newly promoted major from Luo Chang? Oh my goodness, it's him, one person was shocked for a second. Correct. Our objective is to rob all the money he earned today, the leader replied. So where are the two of them, another person asked. According to the Heavenly King, they are sleeping inside the furniture mall right now. Wah, they surely know how to enjoy their lives. At least they are better than those bunch of nerds. Don't get too used to calling them nerds. Those are all class aptitude geniuses. Who knows, maybe one day some of them will become our superiors. Fine, fair enough, the group approached the main entrance secretly. However, upon their arrival, a problem suddenly emerged. Lu Xu and Chen Zuan had sneaked in during its opening hours, but now the door was locked. So, how should they enter? What the? This was surely a headache. The leader had examined the structure of the mall before they came. But, dishearteningly, he realized that all the windows could only be unlocked from the inside with designated keys. This was the case in most shopping malls, and some windows could not even be opened at all. The iron roll-up door was already down at the main entrance. But they could not just dismantle it with their flying daggers, could they? These two kids, one person's head was throbbing, they certainly picked the right place. Go up the stairs. There's a passageway leading downstairs. Chapter 338, Rookies and Veterans Although the fighters from the Heavenly Network certainly had ways to break through the door, it was a breach in their code of conduct to damage public property for such a small task. If they were fighting against external organizations, there would be no doubt that they would use every means at their disposal. But now, their role were that of guardians. In many foreign movies, the special agents would destroy public facilities without a care for the cost in their sports cars so as to fulfill their missions. Those kind of things were complete bullshit. If it had happened in reality, their cities would have been immediately flooded with public protests. Furthermore, they were instructed to rob Lu Xu's money and by right not to even hurt him. In fact, they did not take their task very seriously. 5 versus 2, and one of whom was even a rookie. Their chances of winning were 100%. To veterans like them, candidates like Chen Zuan were complete newbies. They knew, slight advantages in power were never enough to compensate for actual combat experience and confidence. Moreover, Chen Zuan, who had just ascended to Class D, had no advantage in his power at all. The mall consisted of three floors with great separation between every two levels. At that time, all the lights in the furniture mall had been turned off. Thus, the five men in black climbed up the stairs in complete darkness. There may be security guards on the top floor. If there is, one person stay behind to make an explanation. Do not hurt him, the leader said. Rest assured, leader. We won't hurt him. We know the limits. Under the current circumstance, even knocking the guard out was not a desirable solution. Be it by attacking the back of his head or his carotid artery. It was nonsense to claim that knowing their limits would result in no harm at all. It would be just fine if they could show their identification documents and be mindful of the consequences. But of course, it would be even better if they could sneak in without being seen. Their initial plan to enter from the main entrance was in the hope that they would go unnoticed as well. The five ascended quickly. But suddenly, a knocking sound pierced through the silence of the night. Everyone was stunned, what is that sound? Dong dong dong. Everybody turned to the source of the sound and saw Lu Xu knocking on a French window above them. He was looking down at them calmly. Lu Xu was on the third floor while they were somewhere between the second and the third. All of a sudden, it became awkward. Lu Xu breathed out a breath on the window, covering the glass in white vapor. Then, he wrote with his finger, red fishies. The group looked at one another in confusion. 
what did he mean? Then, Lu Xu breathed out two consecutive breaths and wrote again, green fishies. And donkeys. From Hao Ji Chao's distress, plus 199. From Wang Yuqi's distress, plus 177. From. Is he saying we are donkeys? What the hell? Does he wanna die? God damn it. Isn't he sleeping? No. I cannot let him pass like this. I'll beat him up. In fact, Lu Xu had written it separately mainly because the vapors dried up too fast in summer and he could not write that many words quickly enough. But when he saw the distress points, he realized instantly, oh, expectedly it was you five. A few minutes ago when he was just about to sleep, he received quite a lot of distress points when Hao Ji Chao and the rest were stuck outside the furniture mall. At once, Lu Xu had a suspicion that something was up, which was further reinforced by the faint energy waves he felt afterwards. And now, they were standing right in front of him. But Lu Xu was curious, why were they here? Judging from their Chinese names, it seemed unlikely that they were enemies from external superpower organizations who were here to attack class aptitude geniuses. Thus, Lu Xu decided at once that they were probably people sent from the Heavenly Network to cause them trouble. Earlier, he had a feeling that the assessors were too easy on them. It would be too boring in the absence of challenges along the way. Although those geniuses were indeed spoiled, sooner or later they would come to realize the meaning of real life. The five people sped towards the top floor. No matter how strong this class C strength type was, they were determined to teach him a lesson tonight. How could a rookie make fun of the veterans? As for Lu Xu, he never planned on going easy on them as well. <laughs> what was wrong with the Heavenly Network? They certainly did not come with good intentions as they had entered so sneakily. Lu Xu had carefully considered their motives. To beat them up? Unlikely. The five people clearly held the advantage with their numbers. So what was the point? Therefore, their target was probably Lu Xu's money, so as to increase the difficulty of their survival? My money? Till here, Lu Xu was already fuming with anger. Immediately, Lu Xu woke Chen Zuan up, go. Someone's here. Chen Zuan was still in his dreamland, huh? Who? Nia Ting, only this name could awaken the little fatty instantly. Chen Zuan was fully awake at once. Principal Nia's deterrence in the capital Daoyuan class was definitely not a joke. As the heavenly king, his role as the principal was only thought to be nominal at first. One day, Chen Zuan decided to skip a lesson, but he ended up standing in Nia Ting's office as punishment and even his parents were called to the school. What the? Four ordinary teachers and principals who dared to call Chen Zuan's parents. Only Nia Ting could do that. That was not all. As for where he had been and what he had done, Nia Ting was fully aware to each and every detail. Chen Zuan's flesh crept, as though he had no secrets in front of Nia Ting. As a result, he would recoil reflexively at the sound of Nia Ting's name. Chen Zuan was very certain that Nia Ting did not like him. What is Heavenly King Nia doing here at night? Chen Zuan was flustered. Lu Xu mused, right, what should he be doing here? After two seconds, he said, to beat you up. Brother Xu, can you please tell me the truth? Chen Zuan's face darkened. He was not stupid. Why on earth would the Heavenly King travel a long way to beat him up at night? Though scary, it was illogical upon second thought. Well, there are five people from the Heavenly Network here, maybe to rob our money so as to make it more difficult for us, Lu Xu said frankly. Then what should we do now, Lu Xu? Chen Zuan drew a cold breath. Although he never cared much about money, he now understood even a few hundred yuan could save their lives. Call the police? Lu Xu was pondering. The police? Chen Zuan was shocked. Was it really suitable to report that to the police? Tell them that there were a group of practitioners planning to rob their 200 yuan or so? Lu Xu suddenly asked, 
Do you think they brought their wallets with them? Chen Zuan hesitated, maybe. In the next second, unlimited fighting will erupted from Lu Shu. Chapter 339, Head on Attack How Ji Chao and the rest broke in from the rooftop Although the rooftop door was locked, it was an ordinary household padlock which was easily picked open. Lu Shu was on the third floor. But they knew, they should not treat him the same way they did to the other newbie students. In spite of the possibility that those students might become important figures in the future, their current strategy against ambush was more of evasion. It was not a matter of who was stronger, but the instinctive nature of the majority who had been living a peaceful life. Lu Xu was different, though. He was well known for accomplishing two military achievements, twice in the remains, a testament to his exceptional abilities. Moreover, his aggressiveness was evident from his proactive decision to write messages to his opponents. They must be wary of his sneak attack. If the story spread out that a group of veterans ended up being tricked by a rookie, they would be so ashamed. But be cautious, he may try to escape too. Once he's not seen on the third floor, speed up. Roger. The five descended the stairs slowly. There had long been tacit collaboration among them. But as soon as they walked to the hall on level three, to their surprise, Lu Xu was darting towards them like an arrow, with the little fatty Chen Zuan struggling to catch up behind. What happened to the secret attack and escape? How reckless was he? Is he, insane? What's happening? Beat him up. It was hard to judge which side was more aggressive, on the one hand was the veteran's anger at being tricked, and the other was Lu Xu's desire for money. In order to not damage any furniture nearby, the two sides could not unleash their full power. But after hearing the two words, beat him, it was clear that the invaders had no intention to kill. Thus, Lu Xu decided not to restrain himself too. Upon their first encounter, Lu Xu and Hao Ji Chao of Class C gave each other a punch in the chest. Following a loud sound, the two flew backwards under the blow. Hao Ji Chao was stunned by Lu Xu's move. At the current rate, neither side would gain anything from the fight. Was he out of his mind? Moreover, Hao Ji Chao noticed he had underestimated Lu Xu's strength. Despite being of the same class, as a normal practitioner, how strength was one class lower than Lu Xu's. But by right, a recently awakened class C should not have so much strength. With impressive agility, Lu Xu's back flying motion soon stopped. Then, he shot towards them again. According to his analysis of the situation, Lu Xu himself clearly held the advantage with his defense and strength. Without flying daggers, there was no way that his opponents could defeat him. To Lu Xu, who had gone through numerous training and actual combat, the force application skills had long internalized within him as part of his own body. Due to the teamwork on Hao Ji Chao's side, Lu Xu's every blow would be fended off by them together. But the harm they exerted on Lu Xu was apparently insignificant. It felt like a 5 versus 1 fight where your own HP was being reduced by half from every attack, but your opponents remained almost full. More frustratingly, even your own equipment was banned from use, so you could not amp up your attack anyway. Now, it hurt how Ji Chao's head to see Lu Xu dashing towards them again. What kind of person was that? In fact, the greatest weapon of Class C practitioners in the country was flying daggers, which could accomplish impressive feats in times of crisis. Last time, in Chin Bailey and Anthony's fight, the dagger pierced through the thick curtain of sand and severely wounded the enemy at once. But their spirit as fighters was no joke as well. At least their will was undoubtedly stronger than ordinary people's. In the end, Hao Ji Chao started to muster his spirit chi armor as self-defense. He was prepared to resist Lu Xu's attack until he got the student's money. A veteran's dignity? That's not the priority. If not, when Lu Xu had exhausted all their energy, things would get more complicated than who beat who up. However, right at this moment, Lu Xu suddenly increased his speed to the extreme, even faster than just then. 
Now, Hao Chichao's speed was no match for Lu Xu's, despite his improved defense thanks to his spirit qi armor. Meanwhile, his other class D team members were defeated by Lu Xu effortlessly with merely a few strikes of his punches. It all happened in an instant. At first, Chen Zuan was following Lu Xu back to the third floor. When the fight just started, he roared and wanted to come up to help. But when Lu Xu circumvented Hao Jichao for the other members, Chen Zuan happened to be right in front of Hao Jichao. After a few seconds of silently staring, Zuan roared, turned and ran away. Was it not obvious? It was Lu Xu who was the pro. How could he, Chen Zuan, be a rival against a Class C expert? After finishing off the rest, Lu Xu turned back to deal with Hao Jichao. Sensing the change in the situation, Hao Jichao tried to escape at once. He could never win against Lu Xu. When Chen Zuan turned, he was shocked to see how Ji Chao had switched his target from Lu Xu to himself. Lu Xu had the money. Why are you chasing me? However, the little fatty was still a loyal friend. This thought had to be suppressed. Otherwise, who the hell knew how scary Lu Xu would become after the fight? But before how Ji Chao could reach Chen Zuan, Lu Xu had already caught up to him. Of course, Lu Xu did not intend to kill him either. With a loud punch on Hao Jichao's back, he demanded, Give me all your money. Hao Jichao was provoked at once, Listen up. I can defeat you. But my flying. Boom. Another punch. That almost made Hao Jichao fall. Though his armor was intact, it was not nice to have someone chase him only to punch him. Don't force me into using my flying daggers. I. Where's your money? How Jicho was on the verge of exploding. What kind of candidate was that? It was not out of his own will, but his superior's instructions that the flying daggers were not to be used. What the? And who could imagine that a group of five, comprising one class C leader and four class D members, could not defeat one single student? Following another punch, cracks started to appear on Hao Jichao's armor. Despite the rapid recovery power from his spirit qi, he already had a bad feeling about what was going to happen. Why was this student so powerful? At that moment, Chen Zuan joined in too. With Lu Xu by his side, he managed to pluck up his courage as well. After five minutes, Hao Jichao sat together with his teammates who were equally bruised. If it were not for the risk that we might hurt you with our daggers. Don't touch. I'll give you the money myself. Fending off Lu Xu's hand which was reaching into his pocket, Hao Jichao took out his wallet by himself. From Hao Jichao's distress, plus 999. Huh? So little, counting the 1,600 yuan in his hands, displeasure crept up on Lu Xu's face, bring more next time. Hao Jichao was fuming with infuriation. <laughs> Next time? Next time I'll bring over 20 people to kick your ass, you hear me. Still got more in your left pocket? Lu Xu asked. From Hao Jichao's distress, plus 999. Chapter 340, Still Lost. Lu Xu, is it really okay that we did this? A tinge of worry crossed Chen Zuan's face. What on earth had they done? In any case, they were experts from the Heavenly Network. In the past, how did Chen Zuan dare to imagine that he would beat them up and rob their money afterwards? But in Lu Xu's words, it was justified for a robber to be robbed. Why they could rob us, but we cannot do the same to them. Because their faces were bigger. Chen Zuan hesitated for a while, but then, you shouldn't search all their pants and shoes for money. It's not easy for them to save some secret hoard I guess. After that, Lu Xu fished out another more than 300 yuan from Hao Jichao and the rest. Now, they already had 2,200 yuan but it seemed that they had made themselves enemies. Let's leave. We can't stay here anymore, Lu Xu frowned, I'm afraid he may really bring back dozens of people for revenge. Speaking of which, how did they find out our location? I was very cautious along the entire way and there were no followers at all. 
Are there talents in the heavenly network specialized in stalking? You ask me? How do I know? If I knew, my parents wouldn't have been called to school. This kind of trick can only be used once, but this much is definitely enough for us to survive for 15 days thriftily. It seems that the assessment is not that hard after all, Lu Xu exclaimed. Chen Zhuan was struck speechless. Who else could whip a Class C expert like him? Fine, even if there was, who else would be so shameless as to conduct a body search for money? And he still called it not that hard? Chen Zhuan suddenly started to worry how other people would treat him when he returned to his Daoyuan class. His head was already spinning at the thought that one of the five was actually the class master next door. However, Chen Zhuan was really unsure about the value of 2,200 yuan. On usual days, one single meal would cost more than that for him. He was concerned, is it really enough? Lu Xu shot him a glance, or, we can always find a buffet and stuff you with 15 days amount of food. Isn't it true that you won't get hungry as long as you got enough food? Chen Zhuan exploded at once, I won't do something so shameful. In the capital, I, Chen Zhuan, am. Staring into Lu Xu's composed eyes, his voice was getting increasingly softer. In the end, he immediately re-strategized under fear, moreover. Heavenly King Nye had told us specifically not to use our power. You are too obedient. Are you his parrot or what? Lu Xu scorned. Actually, he would not force him either. It would indeed put Chen Zhuan in an embarrassing situation by asking him, the young master of the Chen family, to eat into the buffet restaurant's blacklist. After all, they still had other alternatives available. By the time they were really left with no choice, Chen Zhuan would have to do it anyway. The pair returned the pillows to their original places. Then, following the same path taken by the men in black just now, they ascended to the rooftop through the stairs. Lu Xu walked in front while Chen Zhuan followed behind. Once Lu Xu emerged from the rooftop gate, he froze. Confused, Chen Zhuan caught up with him but was stunned in place immediately as well. Good evening, your heavenly king. Good evening, your heavenly king. They greeted Nye Ting compliantly. At that time, Nye Ting was looking at them on the rooftop, with an expressionless look on his face. For a moment, no one broke the silence in between. Reluctantly, Lu Xu handed over 1,000 yuan to Nye Ting, can't be more. We got the money with our own abilities. Lu Xu's voice slowly vanished into the air as well. It was a bloody class A that he was facing. Even someone with an itching palm would have to stay alive to spend his money. By the way, as the heavenly king, why was he so free all the time? Nye Ting took the 1,000 yuan in his hand but remained silent as before. Then, he still did not utter a word after Lu Xu surrendered another 500. Lu Xu was unhappy, please, we need to keep something as the reward for our hard work. However, only after Lu Xu yielded up another 200 did Nye Ting finally withdraw his hand, behave yourselves. After that, he was gone, leaving behind Lu Xu with dejection written all over his face, time to have a buffet. I'm out. Chen Zhuan clenched his teeth. We only have less than 600 left. Do you think we can make it through 15 days, given the cost of living here? In any case, I'm not going. I have my face to save. Well, it seems you never learn to appreciate, Lu Xu sneered. Can I just eat three days amount? Chen Zhuan was scared. He could not afford to displease either the Heavenly King or Lu Xu. Disobeying the former might not bring about severe consequences, but as for the latter, Chen Zhuan might be skinned alive. From Chen Zhuan's distress, plus 399. Nye Ting's tall build cast a shadow on the stairs deep inside the Lingjing Lane. He walked down with a graceful pace. Overwhelmed with anxiety, how Ji Chao's team were waiting in the base below. Nye Ting passed the 1,700 yuan to them and proceeded deeper inside. While Hao Chi Chao could not help but admit to their mistake, your heavenly king, it was our fault that the mission failed. You are not to blame. I underestimated him. 
Go and have some rest. I will send more people to you next time, Nye Ting said calmly. Behind him, Hao Jichao and the rest were deeply moved. In fact, although it was a widely understood fact that military merit was the sole testament to power there, the heavenly network was not a single-dimensional result-oriented place. The insiders all knew that the heavenly king would never punish or chide anyone so long as they had put in their best. Actually, Nye Ting cared deeply about his people. In order to avenge the 21 comrades-in-arms who were killed by the class B metahuman of water type, Nye Ting had been very carefully planning for as long as three months. This incident made everyone in the heavenly network tremble, as they learned that someone would certainly take vengeance for them even if they died in their post. The underground base was huge. Redesigned from the prototype of an air raid shelter, it went even deeper into the earth. Nye Ting walked all the way back to the secret room full of monitor screens. Sure Xue Jin was already inside. He put down his book and smiled, did the kid surrender his money? Only 1,700, Nye Ting sat down, his strength has been growing rapidly since his awakening. Also, earlier on the train, I already had the suspicion that he is a rare case who awakened to two types of powers, but one of which is seldom used. Back then, his power was covered by Chao Qingxi's, so I can't say for sure which type his belongs to. Then are you disappointed in him yet? A brat who dares to rob his own people's money? Sure Xue Jin laughed. Actually, he had been paying attention to the young man since his first encounter with Li Xianyi, but had given up his interest after nothing abnormal happened. However, how could he be normal? As a person who made military achievements twice in the remains and helped Shen Bailey and Li Xianyi with their foundation restoration and their ascension to Class A? Nia Ting's fingers slowly tapped the arms of his chair, on the contrary, I am more interested. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And then we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens